managerial accounting scattergraph method for separating mixed costs. Now, what do we have in front of us here is six months worth of data for shipping cost, which we believe the activity driver that's causing shipping cost to change is number of pounds ship. Now, how do we know that this is a mixed cost? Well, let's take a look at the data. Uh, at 1,000 pounds, our shipping cost is a total of 280. At 1,200 pounds, our shipping cost is a total of 320. So while total cost is increasing as activity increases, it is not in proportion to the change in activity. Uh, one fifth or 20% increase in the cost here, but uh, excuse me, in the pound shipped, but the cost did not increase by 20%. So we've got a cost that is part variable because the total increases as activity increases, but that increase is not uh, proportional to the change in activity. Now, uh, and we'll use this example data to illustrate first the scatter graph method, then the high-low method, and least squares regression. Now, let's take a look at this data on a scatter graph. Now, a scatter graph is nothing more than uh, the same type of graph that we saw when we were talking about the different cost behaviors. The vertical axis is the total cost and the horizontal axis is our activity measure, in this case number of pounds shipped. And to use a scatter graph you simply take your data and plot it on a graph, which I've done by hand here. So at 900 units our total cost was about, I believe it was about $280, and um, actually it was $265, and at 1,200 units it was about 320 so I just plotted each of those points. Now, remember we said that the scatter graph is advantageous because it gives us a picture of cost behavior. If we had, as we looked at the, as we plotted the data, if we had data out here and then we skipped a big space and we had data out here we would have what is called clusters of data and clusters don't behave in a linear fashion we can acquire the the resource in chunks at a time so this might be a step variable or a step fixed cost actually this one has an inverse relationship because as we went uh, higher with activity, the cost actually drops. So that's kind of an odd cost behavior. The other thing that we might look for in a scatter graph is whether we've got data points that are kind of way out here by themselves. Uh, we got a bunch of data right here that appears to be fairly linear and then we've got this data point over here all by itself and this data point over here all by itself. These are what are called outliers. Now the high-low method in and of itself, this, the regression method in and of itself, does not identify outliers for us, nor does it identify clusters of data. So the scatter graph can help us to visually see whether or not our data fits a straight line. And if we were to draw a line between this set of data, we would see that it does indeed follow a straight line pattern. Not a perfect straight line, but it does indeed follow a straight line pattern. So the scatter graph, great advantage in giving those of us who are visual learners a picture of how the cost is behaving. And scatter graphs can be printed out through Excel spreadsheets as part of the regression. So we don't have to rely on drawing them by hand and not getting our lines straight and that sort of thing. So a great advantage, and any time you're trying to analyze data, the first thing you're going to want to do is prepare a scatter graph and get that picture of how that data is behaving. Whether or not you truly have linear data to which you can apply regression or the high-low method.